Time to face the music. Welcome to Mojo Plays, and today we are sitting back with a glass of Chardonnay and pondering the 10 biggest unanswered questions in GTA games. For this list, we'll be looking at plot holes, mysteries, and things that just straight up make no sense. If we can't make heads or tails of it, then we're going to talk about it. Do you have an answer to any of these mysteries? Let us know in the comments below and be nice about it or I'm telling mum. Before we continue, we publish content all week long, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified of our latest videos. Where did that come from? First you take a hostage against my advice and then you start some kind of crazy high school romance with her? Are you nuts? She's, she's a 60 year old housewife. Ah, she's 57. One of the more fun mission genres in the GTA 5 campaign was the heists. Assembling a team, making a plan, executing it with all the ups and downs based off of your prep choices, it was a load of fun that offered a handful of different outcomes. During the third campaign heist, the Polito score, Michael, Trevor and a hired third enter the Blaine County Savings Bank with some duffel bags. They exit the bank after collecting the money they need, kitted out in heavy duty body armor and chain guns. The big question is, where the hell did that gear come from? Of course, opening up this can of worms also forces the player to ask, where do the characters store their regular arsenal of guns? But something about this being folded into the plot of the game and the real world events makes it a little harder to overlook. Got the money? Everything we got. Okay, here's your cut. Considering present scrutiny on public worker remuneration, this is a big win. Why was Michael in Jimmy's car? Dad! After the prologue of the game where the player plays as Michael, the game jumps ahead nine years and lets you take control of Franklin for the opening missions of the main campaign. One of these missions requires Franklin under the orders of his boss Simeon to break into a client's house and repossess their car. After successfully sneaking through the house and getting a brief look at the dysfunctional family that lives there, Franklin goes into the garage, steals the car and drives away. This is where the player learns they just repossessed Michael's son's car as Michael is lying in the back seat and now has a gun to Franklin's head. Play the game to learn what happens next because we have a bigger mystery. Why the hell was Michael just lying in the back seat of his son's car? There are currently only theories available as it's never explained in the plot. Some people online believe Michael might have seen Franklin sneaking around and then went to lie in wait, but this would require Michael to somehow know that this man who's breaking and entering was attempting to repossess his son's car and not that he was doing one of the other 400 things a person might do when they break into your home. Oh, I'm going to get this guy good. Ah, damn it. He was just here to kill my kids. Bugger. This backseat is hella comfy though. <laughs> Whose face is that? This is not a plot hole or something in the story that doesn't really make sense. This is just a developer having a laugh and leaving us all wondering. If the player goes to the northern slope of Mount Chiliad to a very specific location, they will see what appears to be a face spray painted into the side of the mountain. To this day, nobody knows who this is or why it's there. Who are you, mysterious man? Many commenters claim it's Aaron Paul from Breaking Bad with a brazen amount of confidence, but these claims have never been substantiated. Getting away matters. He crashed his bike, man. That's what happens when you're working with fools. As we've already discussed, heist planning was a major part of the GTA 5 campaign. One of the key factors was choosing your team. Choose someone more experienced and they require a bigger cut. Choose someone less experienced and the players will pocket more money. Obviously, this will require more from the player during the actual heist, but if you can handle it, then the payoff will be worth it. The problem is with the getaway driver, as the player can save money by choosing a less experienced driver with a less reliable car. But why would this ever be an option? The getaway is arguably the most important piece of a heist, so we struggle to believe that any of the characters involved in these heists would even humor the idea of getting an unreliable vehicle to save a few thousand dollars. There goes half the metal! I said to Michael, get a good driver, he went cheap! The Romero Riddle. In GTA Vice City, the player can find two locations in the game, Funeraria Romero, a funeral home and cemetery, and Carnicero Romero, a nearby butcher. 
The shared family name combined with the skeleton in the graveyard missing an arm, which can be seen in the butcher window, helped players to draw the obvious conclusion that these businesses are owned by one family and are dealing in some very unethical behaviour. The Romero Riddle is a myth online that theorises that this family's dealings run deep in the fabric of Vice City. Players believe the Riverside Pavilion Chinese restaurant, located between the two Romero businesses, either deals with the Romeros for human meat or even possibly is owned by them as well. Manholes, basements for meat running, a competing business as a front for them to transfer human meat to businesses all over Vice City. This theory is full, but we'll never know for sure what is true and what is human baloney. What is the big ear? In Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, there is a large radio telescope in Bone County known as the Big Ear. At this point, there's no clear understanding of what this telescope is used for. The signals are known to cause strange effects on the player's radio when driving near it, both causing static and changing the channel. And with heavy references to aliens throughout the game, it's not crazy to believe that the Big Ear is receiving signals from extraterrestrials. My own personal theory is that it's being used to broadcast all of the fake communications from Australia so the world doesn't work out we aren't actually real. I've said too much. Oh, no. uh. Witness protection sucks. After the events of the prologue, the government puts in a significant amount of effort to make sure that Michael Townley can live safely and carefully under witness protection. Fake funerals, faked deaths, a faked survival, relocation and financial aid, an agent assigned directly to this family and a cozy house in the Hollywood Hills. Witness protection is an incredibly well thought out and executed process. So how is it that a drug burnt, ice cream loving juggalo who doesn't understand voicemail, can't work his phone and lives in the middle of nowhere, managed to track down Michael. There's two Michael Townleys living in LS. One is 83 and the other one is at kindergarten. I asked a teacher to put him on the phone just to be safe. Is Wade a secret genius? No, probably not. You're a genius, you moron. Come on, come here. The Urban Legends of GTA. The GTA games may feature more urban legends than any other series. With references throughout the game as well as people trying to show proof online, these urban myths have become the things of legend and almost all of them are left unproven. Whether you're talking about the classic Bigfoot theory that suggested the developers placed a real Bigfoot in GTA San Andreas to roam the countryside and, and be rarely spotted, or you're talking about the lesser known Ratman who plagues the sewers of GTA 4, you're definitely playing the right game. There are lines of code in the original games to suggest that Bigfoot either exists or was meant to exist at one point, and both GTA 3 and 4 feature articles in the Liberty Tree outlining the urban legends of Liberty City. We've seen our fair share of secrets and mysteries in these games, so is it so hard to believe that there's still not a giant goat-rat-bigfoot hybrid wandering the hills of GTA 5? I'm asking you, is it that hard to believe? Because my therapist thinks I'm crazy, and I'm also not allowed to see him anymore. You forget a thousand things every day, pal. Give it up! I got him! I saw your face, I'll remember you! You forget a thousand things every day. How about you make sure this is one of them? Michael DeSanta, previously Michael Townley, is not a good guy. Ugh. Don't make me have to come back here. He is both violent and hot-tempered, a combination that you don't want anywhere near your life. He proves throughout the campaign that he's always acting within his best interests and willing to kill, maim, harm, and, and do anything to get what he wants. But he also has a lovely little catchphrase that he's known to utter to folks he decides not to kill during heists. It's almost like a calling card. The question is, why on earth would a violent, seasoned criminal who kills indiscriminately do this? Even if he suddenly decided he didn't want to kill this particular person, why would he take the time to reveal either his face, voice, motives, or all of the above? Most likely so they could force a plot point to make Trevor go to find Michael. Seems a little lazy, Rockstar. I won't be forgetting this anytime soon, pal. You wanna get lit now, sugar? The Mount Chiliad Mystery. The holy grail of GTA mysteries lies at the summit of Mount Chiliad in GTA 5. At the cable car station, 
The player can find a mural with a few mysterious symbols, including a spaceship, a cracked egg, a jetpack, and an all-seeing eye watching from above. Seemingly pointing the player to strange and secret locations across the map, players have already used the chart to lead them to a sunken spaceship right where the spaceship points and an underwater hatch seemingly where the egg sends you. But big questions still remain. Is there a jetpack hidden in GTA 5 somewhere? What has an underwater hatch got to do with a cracked egg? How do all these elements work in conjunction with one another? Is there more to this mystery or is it a half-cooked elaborate troll by Rockstar to leave us scratching our heads? Who took my panini I left in the fridge? Did you not see my name on it? Has anybody seen my car keys? The questions are endless. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Mojo Plays and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified of our latest videos.